Hi, my name is Ed from gasbike.net. Today I'm going to show you how to install a four-stroke Ghost Racer engine kit on this beach cruiser right here. So before I get into it, I'm going to show you what parts come inside the four-stroke kit. This is the 49cc four-stroke engine. This is the uh, jack shaft cover. This is a few of the belt parts throttle assembly, wide pedal crank, chain cover. This is the engine mount, 2.5 liter heavy duty gas tank, 415 chain. This is the automatic clutch. This is your belt for the jack shaft. This is your chain tensioner. This is a tool it comes with to adjust the tension on the belt. These are some hardwares for the engine and jack shaft. This is the sprocket hardware, and this is your 44 tooth sprocket. These are the tools that we're going to be using today to install all these parts. You need a chain breaker, a few different wrenches and ratchets, Allen keys, some Teflon for the gas tank, blue Loctite, a few different wrenches, Phillips screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, preferably an impact wrench, and also a drill to drill a hole. The first thing we're going to do is install the rear sprocket onto the rear wheel. You have to remove these screws in order to get the coaster brake off. So once you have the coaster brake and all the covers off, should have the exposed axle right here. In some of the kits you can see that there's two pieces of rubber and in this situation one of them is a little thicker than this one. The thicker one you always want to use on the inside and the thinner one on the outside. So you're going to cut the, cut the thicker one to make it fit on the inside. So take your scissor and right between two of the holes make a cut. Remember the thicker one goes in the middle. Now use the thinner rubber piece on the outside and then take your sprocket. Sprocket is a little bit towards one side. I like to make it wider so I put it on this way. This way your chain has more clearance to not hit your wheel. If you were to flip it it would be a little closer to the tire. So it's different for every bike. On this bike, I like to put it like that. So now you get these screws right here and just put them through, put them through the sprocket, put it through the rubber, through the spoke, and then through the second piece of rubber in the middle. So it looks like this from behind. Now you take your third moon metal pieces Put it over, grab one flat washer, one split lock washer, and then one lock nut with a blue seal. So for now we're just going to make them hand tight until we have all nine bolts installed. Now moving on to my second third moon piece. I'm just continuing to install all the hardware. Okay, so before you start tightening down all the bolts, you want to make sure that the sprocket is right in the center of the hub. So try to line it up as best you can because if you don't, your sprocket will be off center and that'll cause your chain to fall off. So what I recommend is tightening the center screw in every half moon area. So if this is the three screws in this half moon area, do this center screw first, then this center screw, then this center screw. Then move on to the one in front of every one of the ones that you just tightened, and that way you'll evenly distribute the force of the tightening as you go. And always constantly check that your axle is in the center. So we're gonna start with the first. 
I've tightened this center one, this one, and this one. So now I'm gonna stop and make sure that the sprocket is still in the center. Looks like it is off a little bit, so I'm gonna readjust it to make sure that it's perfect before I keep tightening. Okay, looks like it's right in the middle, so I'm gonna continue to tighten all the screws. So now remember, we're gonna tighten the screw right of the one I just did tighten. Still looks like it's true, so we're gonna continue tightening. Check again, it looks like it's still true. So now I'm gonna do the final tightening on all nine bolts. Okay, now the rear sprocket is on. So the next step is to reinstall the coaster brake arm. So in this situation, we're having a little problem with the coaster brake hitting the bolts right here. So what we have to do is bend the arm from here and then bend it again right here. So this part ends up right in the same place as before. We're gonna do this with a vise. So you put the brake arm on, put your washer back, the bigger nut. The easiest way I found to tighten it just like this. Put it up against the table and tighten it like that. Make sure it's nice and snug. Then you're done. Just add the next bolt back on and you're ready to mount your wheel on. Make sure that when you go like this, there's no play. As you can see right here, we have some play. So just tighten it up just like that. Just a little bit so you don't feel that it has any play anymore. So now Reinstall all the parts so we can check again if it's tight for sure. Usually the screw goes in that way, but since we have this chain here, I recommend putting the screw in from the inside so there's more room for the chain. So the nut is going to be on the outside. Once you have that tightened, at least by hand, you can go back and start tightening the wheel. Okay, now the wheel is installed. So next we're gonna install the three-piece crank system. So the first step is just to loosen these. Also, you wanna take off these pedals first. I'm gonna take off this chain cover so I have more room. So this is the centerpiece of the three-piece crank that we had to buy in order to install a three-piece system into this bike. So I'm just going to go through how to install this. You're going to put on these pieces onto one side. Put the bearing on like that. And then as you can see, it comes with these bearing holders, but the bike already has them in there. So I'm just going to reuse these. You take this with the bearing loaded and just put it straight through there. Now I'm going to take the other bearing and nut, put the bearing first, and then the nut. Now I'm going to use my wrench to just tighten down these bolts. We'll get them tighter once we have the pedals on. So now this is the second and third piece of the three-piece crank. So we're going to install these onto this center piece. Just get it on as tight as you can, and then get the screw that it comes with and use the screw to hold it on. Make sure you tighten this as tight as you can. Now that we have this on, we can use it for leverage to tighten these big bolts back here. Now we're gonna install the second crank arm. Now remember, if this one is up, you wanna put the next one facing down. Now, reinstall your chain. And since this has a smaller sprocket, you're gonna have a lot of leftover chain. So what you need to do is uh, shorten your chain. 
For that, you're going to need a chain breaker. This is a basic one I got from Harbor Freight Tools for $15. Okay, so now that we got the wide pedal crank on and we shortened the chain, we're ready to move on to the next step. We're going to install the metal engine mount. So first, just take off your bolts. Uh, you want to do a mock-up of where the engine's going to be. So the process is you're going to install this first. You're going to put it here and figure out where it's going to be. Once you tighten these screws down, you're going to loosen these four screws, take the silver part of the bracket off, and mount the engine to it. Then you're going to put the whole engine with the silver part back onto the bracket. So let's get started. You should always try to do a mock-up of how everything is going to be before you start tightening it down. I'm going to place the engine on top of it. This is a pretty big bike, so obviously we have a lot of room for everything and that's where I'm gonna have it resting in its final position. So now I'll just take the engine mount off, and remember, we want this to be a little that way for this particular bike. So we've tightened down the engine mount, and as you can see, the mounting surface is flat. You never want it to be uh, lopsided, because that'll cause your engine to not be properly lubricated. Now that it's tight, we're gonna start removing this part of it so we can put it onto the engine. So we're going to use these black Allen keys, Allen bolts, with one split lock washer and then one of these big washers. And then you're going to get some blue or red Loctite, put just a little bit on the threads and put it inside. Make sure you tighten these bolts very hard because once you tighten them, it's probably the last time you're going to get to be this near them. They're pretty hard to get to in the future, so make sure you lose Loctite and tighten them very well. Okay, so these are the original screws that were holding these pieces into the silver piece. So I'm just going to put some Loctite on every one and reinstall them. Okay, now these four bolts are hand tight. I'm gonna do a mock-up of the engine before I re-tighten them all the way. It looks like we have a pretty good amount of distance here, here, and right here. So this is like the perfect position for the engine to be. So I'm gonna take it off and tighten these screws on the desk and then I'll put it in when it's ready to go. Now the engine is ready for the final installation. This is something very important. Before you do the final installation, you have to remember to add oil to the engine. So we're going to take the dipstick out and we're going to add some, I have some 10 weight 40 oil that we're going to use for this. Just put a little bit at a time until you know you have the right amount. And remember, when you check the level, you want the engine to be perfectly flat. Looks like we still need more oil. Okay, it looks like we're past the, the line, so that should be safe. Now I'll just reinstall the dipstick and we can get back to installing the engine. Now that we have the engine on and it's mounted tight, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is gonna be installing the jack shaft system. So this is the jack shaft plate, and this is the gear with the belt, and this is the automatic clutch. First thing we're gonna do is install this plate on and it's basically going to go right here, just like that. We're going to use the four Allen key uh, bolts. These are the thicker ones. So what you're going to do, you're just going to take one split lock washer for each bolt, and you're not going to use a flat washer in this case, since these holes don't have any room 
for anything but the split lock washer. Definitely put some Loctite on every bolt. Okay, now that you have the plate on, the next step is to install the automatic clutch. We're gonna start to install the clutch. So this is your automatic clutch. There's one part that's flat and another part that has this cylindrical piece that sticks out. You wanna put the cylindrical piece facing out. So it's gonna go right on just like that. Next, you want to install this little square piece of metal, which is called a keyway shaft. You're going to install this into the slit right here. And basically that little metal makes it so the clutch doesn't slide on the shaft. Next, we have the clutch bell and this little copper colored piece right here. What you want to do is put a little lubricate on this piece and this will help you out in rolling the bike in the future. Just about that much is fine. You insert it into here and that's going to keep everything lubed up so you can roll the bike a lot easier. So now you take the screw, with, put it in here and then install this onto the bike. Once you're done, you want to test it by turning this and making sure that the clutch doesn't turn with it. That's how you know the lube is doing its job. Once it's doing that, you can go ahead and tighten it all the way. See how it still turns? Next, we're gonna install the 100 tooth wheel onto the jack shaft plate. You just slide it in here. And before we tighten it down, we wanna put the belt on. We're gonna use this tool to loosen and tighten the wheel. And if you pull it up this way, see how the wheel is moving closer to the clutch? So you wanna get it as close as possible so you can install the belt easily. Now in the future, when you wanna tighten it, you grab it from this side and go like that. But for now, we're gonna install the screws first before we tighten it. You're gonna get your four last Allen key bolts. First, put a split washer, then a flat washer, then some blue Loctite, and install all four bolts into these holes right here to hold the 100 tooth wheel. In the beginning, you just want to have them hand tight. Once we properly adjust the belt tension, we can tighten it with the tool. Okay, so now that these four bolts are hand tight, I'm going to use the tool to properly adjust the, the tension in the belt. This is a little too loose. This is actually pretty good. You see I have about a quarter inch of play in the belt. And if I go like this, it's still easy to move. If you tighten it too much, you'll notice that when you try to do this, it won't move as easy, which is gonna make your bike a lot harder to roll when you're just trying to walk the bike. So this seems pretty good. I feel a little bit of tension. I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening the bolts right there.
Okay, next we're going to install the 415 chain and chain tensioner. So you're going to take your chain and look for the master link, which is right here. So we're going to take off the master link. And then put it on to the gear and you can turn the gear to get it to go through. Now it's time to uh, uh, shorten the chain since as you can see our chain is too long I'm probably gonna have to cut it. Now you're gonna reinstall the master link. I like to put the closed side towards the inside of the bike. Put the flat piece on. And listen to this because it's kind of important. The, the direction that you install the lock piece is important. You always want to have it feed onto the sprocket with the round side first. So if the wheel is going to be turning this way, you want it to be installed like that. There you go. <clears throat> now it's time to install the chain tensioner. What I like to do is put one bolt in and get the, the wheel as close as it can be. And then just back it off a little bit and tighten it right there. That way, this nut head isn't going to hit the wheel. So I'm going to tighten it right there with a little space in between the two. Now install the two bolts, just like that, and put this on the inside. like that. So I tightened this just enough so it wouldn't move and now I'm going to align it with the sprocket. I'm going to use this to just make slight adjustments, I'm going to put it right over the top and then look at it from the side and make sure that the chain is being fed onto the sprocket perfectly in the center. If you don't do this part correctly your chain is going to fall off all the time. Once you see that the chain is feeding onto the sprocket perfectly, you can start tightening this down with some tools. Perfect. It's okay to have not much slack in your chain because it's going to stretch out a lot the first 10 miles you ride it and eventually you're going to have to tighten this by lifting up this whole wheel. Next thing we're going to do is install the 2.5 liter heavy duty gas tank. First thing is to get your pet cock, put this red washer on and what I like to do is to wrap it in some Teflon so you're sure it's never going to leak. Now that you have a good layer of Teflon on the petcock, you can install it into the gas tank. Just 
like that. Okay, so we're gonna install the gas tank. These are the gas tank brackets. And in this case, I'm gonna use uh, regular 10 millimeter lock nuts to hold it on. So we're just gonna put the gas tank on. like that and put those like that and tighten them in. Now we're going to install the fuel line and gas uh, filter. If you look on the filter, there's a little arrow that shows which way the gas is supposed to flow through. So in this filter, it's supposed to go through that way. So I'm going to cut the gas line in half. Make sure you have a clean cut or else it'll break in the future. And put one side onto the filter. And now another side. And since direction of flow is supposed to go down this way, we're going to put this side on the gas tank and this side on the carburetor. So, onto the carburetor. Now we're going to install our 916 thread pedals. So, and it's a reverse thread on these, so don't be surprised if it's not getting tightened. Okay, now we're going to install the Ghost Racer transmission cover. There's three holes right here, and those are going to go to these three holes right here. And we're going to use these gold Phillips screws. Now, for the back side, there's a hole right here, which this bracket is going to go in like that. And this end of the bracket is gonna get put on the transmission. There's a hole right here that will hold this. So let's get started. Okay, we have the three bolts in. Now we're gonna start with the rear mount. So you take one of these black bolts, put it through the big hole, and then screw that into the transmission bracket right here. Okay, now as you can see, I turned the bike around so I can show you how to install the throttle assembly and kill switch. Uh, first thing I want to let you know before we get started is if you can see this metal cylindrical piece uh, this is supposed to go inside of a hole that you're going to drill right here into your handlebar. The point of this metal piece is once it's seated into the hole that you drill, it's going to prevent the whole throttle assembly from turning when you press the throttle. So let's get started on installing this. First thing you want to do is take out the screws and disassemble the whole piece. Once it's all apart, Get your throttle cable you want to grab this end of it put it through the throttle assembly now get the throttle put the lead piece through it like that And then get this and tighten it back down over it. Only tighten the screws a little bit so you can slide it over the handlebar. So now this is ready to go. We're going to drill the hole into our handlebar. Just get a drill. Okay, now that you have a hole inside your handlebar, you're going to take your throttle assembly and slide it over. Make sure the cylindrical metal piece slides into the hole 
Once it's in, this piece will not turn. So now you can go ahead and tighten everything down. So since I have a lot of extra cable, what I'm going to do is run the cable around the seat post and then into the carburetor, just like that. The carburetor is basically in charge of putting the gas into the engine at the right amount based on the throttle that you're pressing. Okay, so our throttle assembly looks like it's pretty connected. Um, I feel a little bit of slack inside the line. So the way you take the slack out is by tightening this screw right here. See this slack? You just keep tightening this. Okay, so out of the throttle assembly is two wires for the kill switch. And then right here is these wires. What you're going to do is disconnect these, plug one of these wires into the plug, and then these two have to be connected together. Um, obviously, these are two male pieces, so they're not going to fit. So I'm going to cut one of them, or cut both of them, and then crimp them together. So now you have two bare wires. You can just put them together, then turn them so they don't come apart. So what I have here is a wire crimp. Basically, once you turn these two wires together, you're going to put it over it, just like that, and then crush it so it never comes off. This is a wire crusher. Now that you're done, you can put a little tape on it just to make everything sealed. Some regular black electric tape works perfect. Okay, so now our uh, kill switch is connected. If you can see here, there's a kill switch with on and off position. In order to have this kill switch work, this has to be on the off position at all times. If you have it on the on position, and you press this button when the engine is on, the engine won't turn off. So you have always to have this in the off position and then the hand switch will always work. Now we're gonna take a few zip ties and just tie all these wires back to the frame. All right, now we're gonna put on the other handlebar grip. So just use the scissors or a knife to cut off your original one. Okay guys, we're done with our bike. Um, as you can see, everything's been assembled correctly. Before I leave you, I want to let you know that I highly recommend that you install front and rear brakes on your motorized bicycle. And I'll see you at the races.